Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org and welcome to your second Java multi-threading tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to talk about the volatile keyword and it's a very confusing uh, word but not really. It's just not used very often and people aren't very aware of it. So I'm going to try to clear that up for you a little bit with a, a very easy example. Um, I've seen a lot of examples out there on the internet that are really hard to follow so hopefully this example will be simple enough to where maybe you'll get it and you can apply it to a more complex problem. This will be a great lead into the synchronized keyword. So let's get started. I'm going to make a class up here. Class counter extends thread. Okay so when we create this class we could throw a thread by but to throw a thread we need to overwrite the run method so public void run and inside of here I want to have a counter that starts at 1 and it's going to uh, print to the screen it incrementing uh, one in at a time so that's pretty easy to code but I want it to do it on a basis in a while loop and we're gonna set a boolean value to true and we're going to say while that boolean value is true to keep printing and then we want to have some type of method that will change that boolean value to false and stop printing that method or the the counter numbers so let's create a boolean value private boolean and we will just say counting that makes sense so we'll say while counting is true okay try to make it as english as possible so it's easier to understand and uh, we're going to need a counter variable, so we're just going to create a, yeah, I spelled that right, private int um, counter equals, uh, we'll just start it at 1, I'll print it out immediately. Okay, so now logically all we have to do is write a while loop, and we're going to say while counting, and inside of this while loop, I want to sys out and control shift uh, that's a shortcut in Eclipse if you don't know and we want to print out the current counter variable and let me give some space in between there so you can see what are the variables and what are the methods and now we want to also increment counter every time so uh, it increments it doesn't stay on the same number and just so if I ran this as is uh, it'll print so fast to the screen we're not going to be able to actually read that it, it's uh, increasing we're just going to see a bunch of numbers flashing so let's uh, slow it down a little bit with a static method from the thread class and the, it's, it's called uh, thread.sleep and what it does is the current thread that's running it will slow it down um, or actually it will stop it for the given time that we put in here and it takes in a, a long type and of milliseconds and a thousand milliseconds is one second so I want this to kind of run kind of quick so I could run it at a tenth of a second but I'm going to run it at a twentieth of a second so every tw uh, second it should have gone up twenty values so that would be I guess fifty and we're going to need to throw a try catch because it's possible this could throw an interrupted exception. And we'll get into what interrupts are and interrupted exceptions are in later tutorials. Don't worry about that too much right now, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Okay? But now we want to be able to change counting to false so it stops counting. How are we going to do that? We are going to write another method. And we're going to say public void stop counting. All right, we're sick of the seeing the numbers. We want it to stop counting, so we're going to set it to false. Counting equals false. Uh, all right, now we can go to this main method in a class I just called test. I usually call them test when I'm just messing around. Well, let's see. We need to create a counter object. So here we go, counter, and we'll just call it C just to be easy. Equals new counter and there was no constructor so we don't have to worry about that and if I wrote c.run which is um, 
valid, you can do that. It will run this code. The only problem is, is it's going to run it in this main thread. If I said c.start, that's when you activate the thread and it will run outside of this main thread. So you'll have the main thread running plus the, the thread that we created right here. So to run it in its own thread, we need to say c. I'll start like this so you can see that it automatically will write it for you. c.start. So now that's running in its own thread. Okay. So now that that's running in its own thread, we want to stop the counting. How are we going to do that? We want it to stop when we hit the enter key. That will be the easiest way to do it that I can think of. So we'll just create a scanner object. And what do we want to call it? Scanner. Uh, I'll just say uh, stop count. Stop count. Uh, it doesn't matter what it's called. Equals new scanner. And we're going to be taking it in from the keyboard. So let's import scanner. And we need to make sure that we uh, actually use the scanner when the somebody hits enter. The way we do that is we're going to just say stop count dot and it should be next line. All right. And we don't have to set it to anything like uh, you know string something equals because we're not going to be typing anything in we're just going to hit enter and now we can call this method which is the stop counting method we can say c dot stop counting so c dot stop counting we wanted to have this scanner object so uh, we can hit the enter key. If we didn't have the scanner object and we just had c dot stop counting right here, it would stop counting immediately. So this will not be run until somebody hits the enter key. Okay? And let's run that one time real quick. Mm -hmm. So it's counting right now, uh, 20 ints per second. And hit the enter key and it stopped. And it probably will almost every time. But there are exceptions, and it, it usually depends on your operating system or the setup of your computer because a lot of these threads, uh, or all threads, are really based on what your operating system does, not really Java. So sometimes they don't do exactly what you want it to do or what you tell it to do in Java. So just know that the operating system is the ultimate boss of what happens when you're trying to execute uh, any type of thread or multi-threading application. So it's been stopping for us, and that's good. But there are times where it might not work. And the reason is, is because this counting variable, this Boolean variable, gets cached into memory. And since this gets called into its own thread, it might not look outside of the thread and keep checking on counting. And when we say stop counting and we set it to false, that's not inside of this run method so it's not inside the thread so there are chances that when you're running your thread that uh, you hit enter and you want it to stop counting but it's not it's just going to keep referring to the value that had been cached away not that it's been updated uh, but as you've seen down here it has been working but you can't guarantee it so that's the problem with um, uh, threads and having some type of variable so we want to be able to have that variable be checked every time it's run and we won't have to deal with uh, it uh, being cached away and not changing in a particular thread and the way we do that is we're going to set this to volatile mm -hmm. and that will make it to where this counting variable has to be visible every time uh, we run this thread and it was already working every time, but now we're guaranteed that it's going to work. Okay, so we're going to run it a couple times, and it always stops when we want it to. And that is what volatile is all about. And in the next tutorial, we're going to get into what the synchronized keyword does. And it's very similar to volatile, but we will get into that in the next one. So just stay posted, and I will put it up as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching.